Hi, everyone. It is June 8, 2021. I really hope that you will listen very carefully to what Lily Tang Williams is saying to all Americans in this video. It's seven minutes. Please pay careful attention. Hi, my name is Lily Tang Williams. I was born and grew up in communist China. I went through the 10 years Mao's Cultural Revolution. Living under a communism is an absolute nightmare. We shared one bathroom with eight families. We have one water faucet. And the government gave us coupons to tell us how much we should eat every month. And uh, in schools, we have to go wear the hairstyle that the school proves. We're not supposed to look pretty as a girls. No earrings, no makeup, and no truly artistic expressions. Everything has to be PC, and we sing red songs, doing red dances, called the loyalty dances in schools. And the whole neighborhood, in the morning, 6.30, you hear speakers come on to go to school, to wake up, to go to work, kind of like a concentration camps. Government control everything, press, radio stations, and the factories, industries, land. We did not know what the world is like outside of China. Even the music, we do not have a choice of our music. I, I barely hear one minute classical music during the news break. By the time that the Cultural Revolution finished, I was 12 years old. And uh, then the Communist Party to say Mao made a mistake. And our whole generation is lost. How could he die? He was like our God. So I went to college, hoped to search for truth, to find out what happened, who lied to us. And uh, then I become very disappointed. I was told the law is not to protect people. It's actually part is true to control the masses. We are just one of the masses. We're not even an individual human being. So when I was in college, I become rebellious. You know, I met, went to dancing parties and met some foreign students. And one American student told me about America, about Declaration of Independence, all the Bill of Rights. I never heard of before in China, especially individual rights. Wow. I said, I need to come to this country if I have to flee China someday. And when I become law school faculty member at the age of 21, I decided this is not a country I want to spend my whole life in. Because still one party dictatorship, my rule of law, dream or never become true. And I need to think about the way to leave China, to walk away from the country I grew up in, and my family, and friends, and the culture, and language, and familiar ways. And uh, of course, I did not have any money either. But I still walked away. After seven times, I went to apply for my passport, get a permission to leave China. And I come to America. And I started with nothing. But I wanted to live American dream, wanted to make something out of myself. So it took me another 20 years to learn English and to get rid of all my educational garbages from China. And I realized my entire life in China for 24 years were full of lies. And the Communist Party, one party dictatorship today still lies to its people and to the world. You know what happened during the pandemic. And but most worrisome is that Americans are become believers of more and more socialist policies. And I become very concerned. I don't want what happened to me happen to my children in this country. And I don't want this country to become the country I left. So I become active to tell my stories and wanted to urge you 
if you are still Democrats members, I know there's lots of good Democrats people. I have some friends. But the Democrat leadership has been infiltrated, hijacked by the socialist, by the Marxist. Look at all the rioters and looters and violence dominating our Americans in their city streets. Look at all the business were destroyed and looted and the people died from the lawlessness and all the people who are so afraid of to speak up to tell people who they even want to support as a president and those young people who are rioters in, you know, in the street they remind me the Marxist Maoist Red Guards during the Cultural Revolution they want to silence you they publicly shame you they want to threaten you Aging Americans for Trump signs were destroyed, looted in New Hampshire. So they think that, hey, you know, you're not supposed to support Trump. Other people might be quiet, but I feel like it's my duty. I cannot be silenced. I was silenced for 24 years in China. I cannot be silenced again. I need to speak the truth. If I can walk away from a, a country, you can walk away from the radical left group and walk away from a party who no longer represent you. The American dream, freedom and democracy. So I hope you share my stories and I hope you walk away. Thank you. I hope you will share her story as well. I also have this other video, and I hope that you will check out Lily Tang Williams' channel because she has an awful lot of videos here. And she's been screaming for a long time. Americans, wake up, smell the coffee. And it's not just Lily Tang Williams. It's many people who have grown up under communism who are speaking out. Of course, they don't get a slot on mainstream media news. That's why we, we, it's our obligation to, to circulate their messages. Uh, there was a video here up from Mao, the anti-cultural revolution 50 years later. And I will link below to this. It is a very no, good, a very good video. Lily Tang Williams and another woman who grew up during Mao's cultural revolution. And here, you know, the, um, the first woman, and I apologize, Lee Schooland is sharing her experience of being a young child at the start of the Cultural Revolution. Her family uh, was, well, from what I got, uh, they were quite wealthy. And during the Cultural Revolution, they she was a blackguard. These categories that communists put you in. Lily Tang Williams was a red guard. She was from the working class. So there was a red guard and a black guard, and the black guard were just not even second class citizens. And the red guard was monitoring the black guard. 
and I don't mean black people. China is probably one of the, China, Japan, um, most homogeneous countries. So the red and the black were just these categories uh, that you were either one or the other. And she talks about her family, uh, her, uh, the properties that they owned. I believe her, f her father or grandfather was an attorney, and he had purchased six properties you know, for his family. The Chinese government just came and took it all away. And the Chinese government, to this day, still has their properties. This is coming. We all know that, right? How do we wake up Americans? Well, that's the great challenge. So I do hope that you will listen to this video. Um, executed. Red Guard executing those who did not go along with the official narrative in China. It's getting in this country, in the United States, to the point where people are afraid to speak their mind. And this change has come about pretty quickly. And I will be posting a video on the struggle sessions and, and uh, the four olds that, you know, the Red Guard, the youth, of course, they always go for the youth, who are not wise and who have been indoctrinated. The Red Guard was destroying China during the Cultural Revolution, just like we see Black Lives Matter in Antifa. Well, I want to also play a few minutes of this video, Lily Tang Williams, a Chinese immigrant's warning on critical race theory, on critical race theory. And she goes through the similarities between critical race theory here in the United States and Mao's cultural revolution. And the similarities are quite striking. But I'm going to start this at 11 minutes and play it out so it's another five minutes. Please listen carefully to what she has to say. I think there are lots of people of color like me wanting to speak up because we see this is a semi, you know, feminine, especially immigrants like me say it's so feminine to what we already went through in the past. Another similarity is the process, the process in critical race theory training and the rituals they go through, it's a similar to the cultural revolution struggle sessions. You will write self-criticize letters and you will evaluate how white you are, evaluate how black you are like in China, and, uh, and you're supposed to apologize for yourself, for your ancestors, for your history, and public shaming, instilling, install hatred, and guilt into people's head. That does not sound like a, all men are pretty equal. We are all brothers and sisters, Americans, who want to work together in peace. The next feature I say the similarity is that uh, they are teaching this in our schools to the children, to the students who are naive, who don't know much without parental consent. I was a red child because my mom and dad were working class, but they wanted to teach us to hate black classes. So we were supposed to be oppressed classes. But then we did not get much food rationing coupons and we did not you know, get a special treatment. Actually, we were equally slaves, just like the black classes. But we're supposed to hate black classes because we were red classes. So it just sounds familiar to me. It doesn't matter which class you belong to, which group you belong to, the communist Marxist, 
will come after you, after you all. That's why I wanted to remind Americans today, don't buy into those kind of rhetorics, narratives, Marxist talking points. Our young people don't know the history because they, you know, government schools do not teach them real history. They don't know what happened in China. They don't know how many millions people died under communism and they want to equity. Equity is a Marxist term. Do our children know that? And racial equity is what? It's the, another name for oppressed versus oppressors. Marxist ideology. Read the communist manifesto that you will recognize some of those terms. I've been in this country for a while. I thought that the spirit of American individualism would resist the sirens of songs of Marxism, Maoism that I left behind. I was naive. It once again come back with a different name as it always does and now threaten to poison America, my refugee, my new country. So I'm very worried. I want you to fight back. I do want to tell you, if you are silenced, you are afraid, I understand. You're afraid to be called a racist. You're afraid to lose your jobs. But if you don't speak up, especially people who know this, it's not true. You are afraid, but uh, it will not matter near the end. They will come after all of us. So it's time to take this warning from a Chinese immigrant, fight back. I'm calling you to support our rally if you live in New Hampshire, in Massachusetts, Vermont, New England states, come to our rally. Okay, the rally came and went. This was posted April 17, 2021. April 17, 2021. Do you hear now the emotion coming through as opposed to her very measured delivery in this video, October 31, 2020. Why is that? Because Lily sees nothing happening and she sees everything getting worse. So a very, very, very important voice. In fact, on her channel, she also has <coughs> videos of an interview with Kristen Watson about critical race theory. And in the first video, I think it's this one interview by Kristen Watson, he says, he starts the video with Lily Tang Williams, maybe the most important voice in America today. I agree with him. Anyone who has lived under communism are the most important voices that Americans really need to take very seriously, and unfortunately, we're not, uh, you know, collectively speaking. We're heading into a very, very dark period. And while I do agree that there's not much we can do unless Americans stop this immature behavior fighting with one another over the left or the right or the Republican versus Democrat or red versus blue, the immature behavior that allows adults to just go on and never do any research to find out what is happening in our country. Um, and unless they begin to change, and everybody wants change, 
But who wants to manifest that change? Well, if we don't, do all we can. Then we are absolutely complicit with the takeover. If we can't even just circulate information, then please don't cry when you lose everything. You know, there's an illusion now that we still have freedoms, that we can still speak out. The, the censorship in our country is getting as tight as it is in China. Big tech, which is the, well, shadow government, the, the, the arm of our government to censor our voices because they have to continue this illusion of, oh, Americans still have the First Amendment. Well, that's dying. Yeah, and when I see, and I, and I have over the years, a whole lot of people in other countries or that have immigrated to this country for the very purpose of opportunity and freedom, they write in comments saying, once the United States is gone, there's nowhere, nowhere in the world for anyone to go for freedom. We had an obligation as Americans to maintain that freedom. So when I see Lily Tang Williams about to just burst into tears because she knows what's happening, she came here to escape the tyranny of China, and now she's facing the tyranny again. And when I see she almost burst into tears, it breaks my heart, and I feel like we have betrayed the world. We as Americans. So I do hope that you will circulate. You don't have to circulate my videos. But I do provide the links below my videos. Click show more. And you will see all my links. Please circulate Lily Tang Williams' voice. Very important for Americans to take seriously what she is saying.